In today's video, we're going to break down the only three numbers you need to track to time your retirement perfectly. Over the past 15 plus years, I've helped retirees time their retirement to help them reach their financial and lifestyle goals. Making the transition into retirement is one of the toughest decisions you can face with all of the numbers that are thrown around online. Understanding if you're following the right advice is confusing, and for many retirees, it's off-putting. Today, we're going to solve the problem. Not only are we going to discuss the only three metrics you need to consider, but we're also going to break down how to use them to time your retirement perfectly. Now, imagine with me that you had planned this epic road trip. You always wanted to see the country, and this was going to be it. You planned out your route, all the stops you were going to make. You booked the hotels. You had a list of all the sites that you wanted to see, the places you were going to eat, the barbecue joint in Memphis, the crab cakes in Maryland, the Italian restaurant in New York City. You were all ready to go. And so here you go on your way. You're driving down some middle of nowhere highway, rocking out to your road trip playlist. Wind is blowing your hair, not a care in the world. And the car starts to sputter. You look down and you realize that you're out of gas. You were all geared up for the trip. You had the best plans ever, but you didn't get there because you didn't have enough fuel. In the retirement world, income is fuel, not assets. Most people miss that. I'm going to say it again for the people in the back. Income is the retirement fuel that gets you there. Income is what you live off of. You can convert assets to income. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But you need income in retirement to be able to have a successful retirement. So how much income do you need? How much fuel? That's metric number one. You're going to need to plan to replace around 70% of your pre-retirement income. You're going to need a higher percentage than that if your household income is on the lower end. And you're going to need a lower percentage than 70 if you're on the higher end. But in general, plan to replace about 70% of your pre-retirement income. So if you're making $100,000 a year as you approach retirement, plan for around $70,000 a year in annual retirement income need. Now, Social Security will get you part of the way there. In general, for a middle-of-the-road income, Social Security will replace around 40%. That means that you're going to need roughly 30% from other sources. As I said, we're going to get to that later in the video. But first, a couple of things to consider. If you're particularly high income, let's say that you have a combined annual household income of, say, $300,000. Two things here. Social Security is not going to get you anywhere near 40% of that number. And two, you likely don't actually need 70% of $300,000 per year to live on. Most of the time when I meet people nearing retirement with that type of income, they've long since paid off their debts, the kids are out of the house, they've got some good assets put away, and they're saving a lot of money at that stage in life. They may have a 30 or 40 or 50% savings rate, meaning they're saving 50% of their gross income at this point. So even though they make 300 grand a year, they're not living on anywhere near that much. And so they're not gonna have to start with 70% of that as a replacement number. Likewise, as I said, on the other end of the spectrum, let's say you make $30,000 a year. There's just a basic cost to exist, rent, taxes, food. So you might actually need to be pretty close to 100% income related. So use the 70% as a guideline. Remember, we're trying to provide good information to as many people as possible here. So we've got to sort of shoot down the middle in these videos. But as they say, your mileage may vary. Now, I only have a short amount of time to discuss income replacement here in the video today. But I do plan on making a video in the near future, breaking it down even more. If you want to be sure not to miss out on that video, click the subscribe button now. Come back and see us another time. Now on to the next metric. Now, I'm going to say something here that you don't expect to hear from a financial advisor, but it's not about how much money you've put away for retirement. You have to put money away, for sure. But the specific dollar amount isn't the important number that you need to consider here. I've talked before on the channel about how I hate the you need a million dollars to retire articles that appear all over the internet masquerading as financial advice. And I hate them because they're wrong. There isn't a magic number. Lots of folks get this wrong, and I understand why. You're bombarded with these articles. Every time you open up the internet browser, there's another one. And so you start to think you need a million, two million, three million dollars to retire. Here's where it's wrong. Remember, it's income that's the fuel of retirement, not assets. So we've got to convert those assets, those raw materials into income to power the retirement, to fuel the ride. Let's say that you need $100,000 a year to retire. And maybe you think you're good because you hit the mythical $1 million retirement asset mark, just like all of the articles told you. Guess what? If you start pulling $100,000 a year off of a million bucks, 
you bought yourself a one-way ticket to the poorhouse. That's not even close to sustainable. Now, let's look at it from a different angle. Let's say that someone has the same million dollars, but they need to draw 25 grand a year from it. They're more than good. They've got plenty of raw materials to convert to fuel what they need for retirement. Here's the rub. It's the same million dollars, and it worked completely differently for one person than it did the other. Now, I'll get into the specifics in a second, but keep this in mind. It's not about the hard dollar amount. It's about the dollars that you have relative to the amount of income that you're going to need. Before I quantify that, let's get real clear on what we're talking about here. This isn't your net worth. These are specifically the assets that you have to fund retirement. So when you get to the point of how much will I need, don't use value of the equity in your house unless you plan to sell the house to fund retirement. Don't include Junior's 529 plan unless you plan on spending it to fund retirement. Don't use the emergency fund. You get the point. For this metric, we're specifically looking for what's the total of the assets that you intend to use to fund retirement. So what's the metric and how much do you need? 10x. 10x is your number here, meaning 10 times your ending salary if you're planning to retire at 67, which is full retirement age for most folks who are watching the video who are not already retired. It's closer to 12 times if you're looking to retire at 65. It's even more if you want to retire early. So let's look at a calculation. Let's say your ending salary is $90,000. 10 times that amount is $900,000. If you wanted to retire at 67, that's your mark for retirement assets. Remember, not counting the other stuff, just the retirement assets. So let's say you're the same $90,000 salary, but you want to retire at maybe 62. You're probably going to need closer to 15 times your salary, which would be about $1.3 million in retirement assets in this case to retire early. If you're at or near that 10 to 15 times your salary in retirement assets, you're in the right ballpark. There's certainly a lot more to it than this. We haven't talked about how to structure the portfolio. We haven't talked about how to turn the assets, those raw materials into the income you need to fuel the journey. So let's keep going with that. So when I was thinking of the final metric, I started thinking about pizza. Not surprising. If you watch the channel, you know that I love pizza. I try to work it into every conversation that I can. Specifically in this case, I was thinking about a time in my life shortly after college where myself and my roommate would buy two large square pizzas every Friday night. Sausage and mushroom for me, sausage and onions for him. And these two half sheets of pizza meant that we had 24 pieces of pizza between us. We would proceed to eat that pizza for every meal from Friday night to Sunday night, the whole weekend. That basically meant three pieces of pizza each for each meal, and that got us through Sunday night, and then we were off to start another week. It was a fantastic way to live for a college kid. That being said, what we did there was we knew how much food we had to eat, and how long that food needed to last us so we could calculate how much we were able to eat at each meal without worrying about running out early. Did you pick up what I did there? That's literally a retirement income plan in pizza form. How much income can you draw from your portfolio to last you through retirement without worrying that you're gonna run out? Now, I can make every video on the channel specifically about designing retirement income portfolios and I'd never run out of topics. So we're gonna keep this broad based so as not to keep you here all day. The metric we're gonna use for the video is this. We're gonna start with a 4% rule. You've heard of the 4% rule, no doubt. You can draw 4% from your retirement assets per year, adjusted up for inflation each year, and 95% of the time, over a 30-year retirement period, you don't run out of money. That's the 4% rule. If you've been here before, you know that as much as I love pizza, I dislike the 4% rule. I say it all the time. It's a math equation, it's not an income plan. But for figuring out if you're on track, it's the fastest way to get there. So here's our calculation. Let's put this thing all together. Step number one, how much retirement income will you need each month? That was our 70% pre-retirement income figure. So let's say that you were making $100,000 a year, you're gonna need $70,000 per year in retirement income. Step number two, what sort of guaranteed retirement income will you have coming in each month? Social Security, pensions, annuity income, etc. Now we're gonna assume no pension here, just Social Security. So if you had $100,000 in earnings, your approximate Social Security check at full retirement age will be around 2,600 bucks a month. Now we're gonna move on to step number three. How much do we have in raw materials, in assets? And can we convert it to income to make up the income need that we have? Assume that we're at that 10 times figure. 10 times $100,000 equals a million bucks. 4% rule time, 4% of that million is 40,000 per year in a starting distribution. So how did we do? We needed 70 grand a year. Remember, that's roughly $5,830 per month. We got 2,600 from Social Security, 
And using metric three to put it all together, we're getting 40,000 a year or $3,333 per month from the portfolio. That means that we're basically at 5,930 bucks per month. That's a hundred dollars more than we thought that we needed. So it's really close. If these were our actual numbers, we did it. We made it. It's pretty tight, but we got there using only three numbers Now you can apply this for yourself. Remember it's what's your replacement income needed? 70% of current income is a good starting point. How much do you have in retirement assets? Step number two, think 10 to 15 times your annual salary, and then simply take 4% of the retirement assets, add it to your other sources of retirement income, and see if you can meet that retirement income need. If you can, you can likely create enough fuel for your own retirement journey. Now, there's a ton more to putting together a full retirement plan than this, but with these three metrics, you're well on your way to timing your retirement perfectly. But of course, as I said, there are details I haven't been able to cover in the video. So if you want answers to some of retirement's difficult questions, click the link in the description to book a no-cost one-on-one consultation with me, and we'll talk about what's on your mind. I'll see you next week.